God, appropriate place for today for us to go. Hey, God, I do want to say thank you, Sister Christy, for all the things you've done behind the scenes. Appreciate it very much. Praise God. Luke chapter 2 and verse number 8. And there was at the same country shepherds abiding in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, an angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel of the Lord said unto them, Fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be unto all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And you shall find, and you shall, and this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, laying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill to men. Again, I just want to lift two words out of uh, the scripture setting today, and that is for my title, and that is fear not, fear not. Let's just pray. God, I pray for every need that's in this building today, all the fears, all of the anxieties that people may be carried into this place today before we walk out of here, that some way they will know that, God, you can speak peace to their troubled mind, peace to their troubled situation. We pray your blessings on every soul in Jesus' name. Thank you. God bless you. You may be seated. You know, Christmas is um, a wonderful season. And there are so many uh, messages that can be preached from the Christmas story, the innkeeper that didn't have room for him, the star that showed the way to Christ, the wise men that came from afar to worship him, Herod that wanted to kill the king. But uh, what I want to look at is just a, a what um, was proclaimed to those shepherds that night uh, when the first uh, declaration of the birth of Christ was made, and that was the first words out of the angel's mouth was, Fear not. And since the first Christmas, the world has forever been changed. It will never be the same. Nothing will ever be the same again. And so today, as we, at this busy time of the year, we have uh, a lot of uh, things on our mind and a lot of things that are going on, but it's so easy to forget what the real meaning of Christmas really is. And so what I want us to do today is just stop for a few moments and make a trip back to the manger. And it really wasn't that impressive a place. You know, there were a few sheep there and a few cows lowing and probably some chickens roosting in the roof. And, um, but the amazing thing that happened was is that that day, because of that day, everything changed because of the birth of Jesus Christ. And today, on this last Sunday before Christmas, um, someone could be changed and never to be the same. And so that's my burden today is that while we're here and remembering how the world was changed on that first Christmas, that even today, he's still changing people's lives. And so who knows what God wants to do in your life today. The birth of Christ was the, the first uh, herald by those angels to those lowly shepherds. And note, uh, he arrived in the night. And it's very fitting because he still shows up in our darkest hour. Matter of fact, he is most welcome when we don't know where any light of day is at. And suddenly the light of his love begins to shine through. And so the old song says it well, standing somewhere in the shadows, you're going to find Jesus. And how many of us today that have found him have found him in those dark moments in our lives when it looked like the shadow of death was everywhere. And suddenly his, his life spoke light into our lives. And so in the night of our, our betrayals, in the night of our uh, being forsaken, in the night of our being let down, he has a way of just showing up. In those darkest moments. And sometimes, um, you know, it's, it's so wonderful just to realize how that he is no respect of person. These were just lowly shepherds out keeping some sheep. And yet and still the most important day of history was being made that day. And he chose to announce it to just these lowly shepherds. Making me to know that God is always interested in you. He's interested in your situation. You're not an insignificant to God. You're important. You are somebody created with specialty in your life. And so today, I pray that though the world may make you feel like that you're nobody going nowhere, God wants you to know that you're somebody, that he has a place for you to go today. Praise God. And so he still shows up, and he still helps us in those lonely moments. The first words out of the angel's mouth was, fear not. 
Because certainly there must have been a terrible fear that gripped their hearts when they saw the heavens light up with these angels host and then begin to uh, proclaim that the Messiah had been born. And so uh, it is today that sometimes at the first impressions of the Lord, uh, there is fear of just here I am a sinner in the presence of a holy God. But he wants you to know to fear not. Because he's here today to bring you good tidings of great joy. Because today you could be born into the kingdom of God. And one of the first commandments that God had uh, recorded in the word of the Lord. In Genesis chapter 15. To Abraham was to fear not. And throughout the scriptures we find fear not mentioned. One person said that it's mentioned 366 times in the Bible. And that was for one for every day and one for leap year. And so... Who knows? But the thing that we do know is that he is the God that can speak fear uh, out of our lives and speak peace into it. And, of course, we know that there's some fears that are good. Um, you know, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. And so there are some good fears that you can have. The fear of snakes and the fear of other creeping things um, is a good fear to have. And, um, and most of you have all, everyone has some kind of creepy thing that they're afraid of. You know, I don't, I'm not afraid of spiders, but I know people that are horrified at spiders. Uh, I just soon deal with a spider as I had with a, a, a roach, you know. Uh, but anyway, everybody has these things that they, they fear, and some of those are good fears. The fear that we teach our children not to touch a, touch a hot stove. And it would be great if only fear was for the positive things that really are, are good to know. But uh, there is fear that paralyzes us. There's fear that torments us. And those are the fears that Jesus Christ came to take away. And like one man, he was talking to his wife about fears that he had about people that were intimidating people. And he said, you know, when I get around these kind of people, my, my hands begin to, my palms begin to sweat. My lips get dry. And so she gave him a solution to the problem. She said, well, why don't you lick your hands? He's God, you know. But... <laughs> It's just not that simple when you're dealing with fear. You know, everybody, when somebody else's fear, you can say, oh, man, that's no big deal. You know, uh, but on the other hand, when it's my fear that I'm having to deal with, it's a big deal. You know, thank God. I have to, you know, when, when, when the, the mice show up and things, uh, most ladies are afraid of them. But me, I just soon not be, I mean, they, if they stay in their corner, I stay in my corner, we're okay. But Sister Smith, there ain't no way. She's getting that. She, she goes after them, and she'll, she'll attack them. They're they going to be dead. They're going to be dead, or they're going to be out of there, one or the other. And so she's not the typical lady. Thank God, when there's lizards in the house, I mean, you know, I'm not really scared of a lizard, but I just don't like picking them up, you know. So she has to pick up the lizards, get them out of the house, you know. So we all have these little things. So mine may seem humorous to you, but I'll tell you, if you told me yours, I'd probably say, oh, man, no big deal, you know. And so it's just that way. But, and so it's easy to kind of... Um, minimize fear but the fear that i want to preach about today is is the fear that god's word says i don't have to have anymore thank god and it's it's the fear that that has that torment to it it's that fear that um the darkness of the moment not the darkness of night but just the darkness the bleakness of a moment and suddenly we feel this overwhelming feeling that uh overwhelmed by the circumstances facing us and somewhere we have to understand Someone said there is nothing to fear but just fear itself. But the truth of the matter is, is that uh, without his help, there are some things that we just don't know how to face. And so I've come to remind you that God is in control. And we need to remember that he is the Alpha and he's the Omega. Thank God. He is the beginning and he is the end. And it's amazing how that um, people can find strength in the most horrendous situations. And I'm reading a book and, uh, about a man that was in the concentration camps in Germany. He was a preacher, and he had helped Jews to escape, and they finally caught up with him. And he just tells how that God sustains him in that prison, even though, sad to say, before uh, the uh, liberation took place, only a few months before the liberation takes place, you know, he, he will give his life for his cause because he won't recant things that maybe he would have been able to spare his life for. But the, the truth is, is that we need to understand that circumstances are not going to write the final chapter in our lives. God is going to write the final chapter. Sometimes we let circumstances overwhelm us. But I'm telling you, God still got the pen in his hand. Your circumstance is not going to define your last moment. God is going to define it. 
Sometimes we think that we are at the end of our rope because uh, a marriage is in trouble, because there's health problems going on in our lives, because we have financial problems and pink slips on the job and problems with the children and all the list could go today. But the truth is that only uh, it's a bend in the road of life and that God is still in control and these things are going to pass. And uh, the thing that only is going to really matter is what I have done for Christ. In the book of Revelation, you know, is the story of John the, the Beloved, how that he was put on the Isle of Patmos. And if you talk about being at the end of your rope, thank God he was at the end of his rope. I mean, there was no place to turn. The Isle of Patmos was the Alcatraz of the Roman government. It was the place where you never left because it was just a... a barren rock island out in the Aegean Sea, and it was just a place that they sent the worst of the worst to just die a miserable death of starvation and uh, doing without water. But, and so there was nothing that John could do. He was in a nothing place. He could go nowhere, thank God, and there was nothing he could do except the Bible says that I, John, uh, on the Lord's day was in the Spirit. And I'm telling you, you'll be amazed at what can happen to you when you're in your nothing of a place in life. When life has dealt you a, a dead end street and you don't know where to turn and you don't know what else to do. If you can just get in the spirit, and you'll be amazed at how on the Lord's day he can just bring wonderful things into your life. And because John was willing to get his mind on the Lord and get in the spirit on the Lord's day, we have the tremendous book of revelations that was given because God put him in a place where that he could speak to him, where that nothing else was going on. And because circumstances will not write the final chapter of our lives, God is going to do that. And so today, I don't know what your circumstance is and I don't know what you're going through, but I can tell you one thing. And good, God is in control and God knows how to work circumstances for our good. And so uh, you could be at, at home alone and feel uh, helpless. You could be in a crowd of people and feel helpless you could be on your job somewhere but that overwhelming feeling of helplessness comes and it's in those moments that it's so wonderful to be able to just stop and remind yourself that hey God can still help me because he is the beginning and he is the end and in his presence he can uh, hear uh, that cry like no one else can hear hey God when nobody else can make a difference he can begin to make a difference and often we find ourselves where the disciples were when they were in, caught in that stormy sea and they didn't know what they were going to do. And to make matters worse, suddenly a ghost begins to walk on the top of the waves towards them. And the Bible says in uh, Matthew 14 and 26, And when the disciples saw him on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. And, but straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And suddenly those beautiful words of be not afraid. And nothing changes in their circumstances. The storm is still raging. The seas are still bellowing. But uh, something about that word from the Lord just says fear not. Suddenly there was a change in the whole atmosphere. Peter decides, well, Lord, if you can walk on water, I'd like to walk on water too. And so he just, Jesus says, just come on. All you have to do is jump in the water. And suddenly Peter was at that uh, pivotal moment that... Uh, the young child is, is when they are on the, the high dive and dad's saying, just jump and I'm down here and I'll make sure you have a safe landing. And so it's somewhere faith has to just overcome your fear and somewhere faith overcame Peter's fear and he began to walk on water. But he did what, um, you know, uh, so often we all do. Once we get moving in the right direction, we get our eyes off of what got us going in the right direction. And the Bible says he began to sink. Because he got his eyes off of Jesus, got his eyes on his problems, got his eyes on his fears. And there may be someone here today that you started walking on water, but suddenly the pressures of life and the distractions of the world begin to catch your eye. And before you know it, you feel yourself sinking when all that you really need to do is to do what Peter did on that faithful moment when he realized that if he didn't get help, he was going to drown. And he cried out to the Lord. And so today I am praying that I can help someone to remind you that really what you need to be doing day is crying out to the Lord because he is more than able to help you. When you understand that God is at the beginning and that he's at the ending and somewhere he's going to see you through whatever that you're going through. And so he is here today with that promise that he made in Isaiah 41 and 10. Fear thou not for I am with thee. Be not dismayed for I am thy God. 
I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Look, I don't know what you're up against today. I just know that uh, he said that you could fear not because God is with you. And when he is with you, everything else is going to be for good. And so my burden is to preach you out of your worry and your fears and to preach you into faith that God is still able to bring something good out of a, a nothing situation. And so at this Christmas time, what, what are you going to find? Because here we are in the presence of a Christmas atmosphere, recognizing that really all of these material things are not what it's all about, but it's about Jesus Christ. And God is uh, our refuge and God is our strength and God is our help and God really does want to care for you and he promised that I will never leave you and I'll never forsake you and so you can count on God's help today you can count on him coming through for you today he is here to forgive your sins he's here to fill you with his spirit he's here to touch that broken situation in your life he's here to be the mender of that broken heart and most of all he is Faithful to do whatever you have need of him to do. And so today I kind of uh, want to say with the angels of old when they appeared to those shepherds. And that was fear not. For behold I bring you good tidings of great joy. That shall be unto all people. And note it's for you. And it's for you. And it's for you. Thank God. No fear. Thank God. But great joy is what he promised that he would um, give us. So while we're standing today. He went on to say, for unto us is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. There is somebody that can save you from your dilemma today. And his name is Jesus Christ. And he shall be, and this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swallowing clothes and laying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angels a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, peace on earth. And I'm telling you, God has come today. That he could just bring peace into somebody's life. So this is why that we're here today. Hey God, to just understand that he still shows up in my most darkest hour. He still shows up when it looks like it's not going to be a very Merry Christmas. But he's come to tell you that I want you to have a Merry Christmas. I want you to have a good Christmas. And so in the midst of all of the, the worries and fears that our world is filled with today. And if you don't believe that our world is full of fears well, you need to just pick up your newspaper. And everything that you read about is fear of what's going to happen. Fear of what the new year holds. And how we're going to deal with all of these new set of problems that, that our government are bringing up on us. That society brings up on us. That the stresses of an economy brings up on us. But I've come to tell you that Jesus is still giving peace on earth. And goodwill to men. Thank God. Because he's the savior. Thank God. He wasn't born just to save you. For eternity, but he was born to save you from whatever dilemma that you feel you're in today. And so I always sing a course. If you have a need here this morning, thank God. Maybe you didn't come to church expecting to cry out to him for whatever need is in your life. But I've come to tell you that that's what he wants you to do. He wants to bring some joy to you today. He wants to bring some peace to you today. Praise God. And don't leave here today with stresses and fears. I got to leave here with faith that he's able to help me today.